saw, it was way back in the back, and the guy goes over and Mary went with me to help. And he goes and does something, she goes, and, and he goes back and he asks her again, and she goes, and so he goes back and he writes on a piece of paper and he holds it up, this big piece of paper, paper says, back to English. <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, he got so comfortable, you know, he, all fell, he fell off the mountain. So, so I'll try to be clear so that y'all understand me. I was uh, speaking to uh, Rwanda this morning. I'm teaching a, a class in Rwanda. And uh, usually I go over there, but I've been doing Zoom classes as of late. And uh, so, I, so it's really cool because I'm just doing a few classes. I say a few, you know, two weeks worth, but I'm not doing them all day like I was when I went over there. And they picked up with it and they're doing it and running with it. I'm real excited about it, but I have to be real careful because, you know, do they understand me or not? All right. <laughs> Okay, just let me know. And, and I reminded the ambassador who was in, interpre interpreting for me this morning, uh, there's a few things, and I said, remember when you came up to me back years ago, and he came up and he whispered in my ear, and I was, I was speaking to their, to their parliament and to their um, Supreme Court Justice and to their, uh, their uh, department of their, you know, their ministers of health, minister of different agencies, uh, and then their... And so I started speaking. I didn't get one sentence finished. And he stands up in the audience, walks up on stage, and whispers in my ear, turn off the sub. And so I'll, I'll, I'll try to do that. <laughs> I don't know. So tonight I'd like to talk about Old Mountain Remedies, but what can you get in the kitchen to address your health issues. And many times when there's a health problem, you can, you can um, use something from the kitchen. A guy came in yesterday, came in yesterday, and his hand is all bandaged up, and he said, uh, he said I just wanted to let you know that uh, I had a significant cut on my hand, and uh, blood was squirting out, squirting out. Well, what, that, what does that mean? What? Yeah, it in an artery. And I mean, it's squirting bad. And, um, and he went and put cayenne pepper on it. And he just wanted to come and let me know it worked. I said, well, who'd you learn it from? He said, I learned it from you. <laughs> and, uh, and he watched me on, on, on uh, Facebook or YouTube or something. And he just poured cayenne across it, you know, just, just filled it full of cayenne. And, uh, and it stopped the bleed. Isn't that cool? Yeah. That's just so cool. And, and our terrible bleed. Now, it's just so cool. God's given us a little simple things that we can do. I'd like to first to, to look at herbs. Um, Y'all live in the country. Y'all have herbs. Anybody use herbs? Yeah, herbs are such a blessing. They really are. And I'd like to go th through different options that God gave us in using these phytochemicals. Um, and one is, is herbs can be just like a bulk herb, or you can make um, teas out of it. Who's ever heard of Patiarco? P A U space D apostrophe A R C O. Patiarco is phenomenal. It it um, it's like Pac Man. It loves to eat cancer. Uh, it increases oxygenation in the body. Uh, it's the best thing I've had. This and, and this and uh, I didn't bring the black seed. This and black seed are the best thing I have found to shrink the prostate. Um, it's it's just phenomenal. It's antibacterial, antiviral, antiparasitic. Yes. P A U space D apostrophe space A R C O. That's about one of the few words I can spell. I spell phonetically and phonics and southern don't work too good. Um, but I did learn how to spell this. One. But Patiarco is the bark of a tree down in Central America. Mm -hmm. And it's just phenomenal if you have mold, if you have, if you want weight loss. You know, there's just a number of things that Patiarco is just fabulous to do. You can make teas out of it. You can do, uh, well, I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. Um, so with this, you can do capsules where you powderize it and put it in capsules. Mm -hmm. Or you can make teas. You can make poultices. Who's ever made a poultice? Poultices are great. 
you can make a poultice out of the herbs, uh, use it for, uh, for cancer. Let's say you've got breast cancer. You can make a poultice out of it, and we'll talk about that, and apply it to the affected area, and leave it on about a half a day, and then put another one on. But Podiarco is one of my favorite herbs. Literally, if someone has cancer, this is the first one I encourage them to use. I like ACAC. Do you know what ACAC is? Or SCAC, E S S I A C? ACAC is a combination of, of several herbs. It comes out of Canada and uh, from the uh, Native Americans in Canada. It's, uh, it's uh, four or five herbs that are extremely good, extremely good to fight cancer. Um, and I like that one for cancer. Um, but these are, that's my two. No, I also like chaparral. Who knows what chaparral is? Who's ever drank chaparral? Nasty, isn't it? Um, you need a close to go along with it, stick on your nose. But chaparral is just phenomenal to kill cancer. It's a blood purifier. If you have a, a teenager who's going through acne, um, you can have them take uh, chaparral capsules. Don't have them to drink it, they ain't gonna drink it. They won't drink it, uh, it's so nasty. Um, but chaparral, the Navajos, who's heard of the Navajos? The Navajos use it still today, topically as a paste for skin issues, for, for acne, for, for sores and, and various things. Potiarco can be used for acne also. Another one, really good. It cleans the, uh, it cleans the blood and it's, it's also good as well. Who's ever heard of wild lettuce? Wild lettuce is a great tool. Um, you can use it. Uh, who's ever heard of Bastyr University? Anybody? Bastyr? Um, it's in Washington. And uh, Dr. Mitchell was, was the co founder. Mitchell died several years ago. And uh, Mitchell was a friend. And I called Mitchell when I'd have questions. And, and one day I, I, I was, I just have such good benefits. I don't use wild lettuce as much as I used to because I'm learning more. Um, it's a great painkiller, but if I can get rid of the pain, then I don't need this. So I'm trying to back up as much as I can and get to root cause as much as I can. So I don't use the, the wild lettuce for pain as much, but there's times you need a painkiller. Podiarco, great painkiller. I mean, God just gave us so many different herbs that can do the same thing. And so I called Mitchell and I said, Mitchell, this is what I use it for. I have people that need to use it long term. Is there any contraindication in using wild lettuce long term? Not at all. Now, this guy, you can. Who's ever used golden seal? You can't use golden seal long, time, long term. Or echinacea, you can't use long term. You want to pulse it because you can use it for about two weeks. Yeah, you can go four weeks, but the, the standard is two weeks. Stop for two weeks, do it again, because the efficacy just drops off, just like an antibiotic. You don't take, you don't take vancomycin all the time. You don't take Cipro all the time. You're going to lose your efficacy. And so, um, and so with golden seal, you, you pulse it. But be cautious with golden seal, because even long-term pulsing, you can start having some depression at six months. I had one guy who got suicidal at a month and a half, and I warned his wife, long-term, be careful. Um, and he started wanting to kill himself, so she took the guns away from him and stopped, stopped the golden seal. I like golden seal. Um, just use it judiciously. Um, but, so this one, and there's some that you pulse, this guy you don't have to. Wild lettuce, you don't have to pulse. You can just plow right through the rest of their life using it. And it's not potiarco. You can just use long term. It's not a problem. Uh, wild lettuce, um, the biggest thing I use it for is pain. It, arthritic pain, uh, but then I found there's things that cause arthritis, so I can get back to that, and I don't have the pain. But like bone cancer, that's your kind of stuff, pain management. Uh, bone cancer is terrible, awful. You know anybody has, has had bone cancer? I mean, it's terrible. And this works well with uh, bone cancer. You take a quart of water, bring it to a bowl, you make an infusion, and um, let me cover infusions and decoctions in a moment. But you make an infusion, bring it to a bowl, totally turn it off, and when it quits bubbling, uh, use uh, one cup of the wild lettuce. And I found there's another tool that even makes it work better, is a cup of skullcap. 
a skull cap is a nerve. I was at the hospital with a friend of ours, a friend of Mary Lou's and I, Mary Lou and I were taking turns staying with her. She had bone cancer. Well, she had breast cancer and passed inside to the bones. Significant pain this lady had. When they would put her on the bedpan, the whole hall on, at, the, at the University of Tennessee Hospital hurt her. I mean, she was screaming so loud. And um, so the doc comes in and gives her something else, and it, it worked. And I said, what did you give her? She said, I gave her a nerve ink. Well, though wild lettuce is a nerve ink, um, it, um, skull cap's better. So I do a cup of wild lettuce, a cup of skull cap, and that quart of water, let it sit for at least 30 minutes to overnight, and then drink one cup every two waking hours, every two hours if the person is awake. And if that works well, then go to every three hours, every four hours, for least dosing. So you use the least possible. And tremendous for pain. And so there's no contraindications with any other herbs. There's no contraindications with any medications. Again, same thing with this guy, Podiarco, no contraindications. Um, but the wild lettuce is, is tremendous. Um, there's so many stories I could share, but I don't have time. Slippery elm. Who's ever used slippery elm? It's, it's a great tool. Uh, I was speaking slippery elm. It's the inner bark of an elm tree. If you have a sore throat, just get you a teaspoon of slippery elm, put it in your water, stir it up, and drink on it. And it will solve that sore throat. I don't know where it was. Well, I was in, I was in, we just got back from two weeks in Alaska speaking, and Mary Lou went, Mary Lou went with me on that. And I got up to speak, and I started talking, and my, my throat got kind of hoarse. And I kept kind of drink water and cleared my throat. She got up and went and, and got another water bottle, put one teaspoon of this in there. And I uh, shook it up, brought it to me, one sw swig. I didn't have to go back and get another swig. It mm -hmm. totally took care of it. It's so cool. Isn't it cool? God gives us these simple things, and it works well. And you don't have to o worry about overdosing on slip reel. Um, I was talking to a Cherokee Indian a number of years ago, and he told me when they would go from village to village years ago, if they didn't have food, they would bark the inner bark of an elm tree, and they would eat that as food. And that reminded me, back when I was in school, I don't remember, elementary school, uh, college, high school, sometime I took history, American history, I remember the, the teacher talking about um, George Washington with his, uh, his army. They were at the Potomac, they are fighting the, the British, it was in the winter, they ran out of food, and this is what they supplemented for about two weeks mm -hmm. for food. And so it's, it's a food, literally. But it's great to heal the skin externally and internally. I don't like it as much externally, though it works extremely well. It just gets a little pasty, and it's harder to deal with, and I found some other things I like using better. But it's very good. I just don't like the texture of it. But internally, I don't care about the texture of it. I don't have to worry about messing with it. And um, it will heal from, let's say you have a, a person who's had an endoscopy. And, you know, they can be a little sore. You can, uh, or they've been intubated. Uh, you can, they can sip on slippery elm water, and it will help to heal that tissue very well. You have any problems in the stomach, gastritis, ulcers, it's going to help to heal that tissue. If you get into the small intestines with Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, colitis, mm -hmm. any of those guys, it's going to help to heal those tissues. You have internal hemorrhoids and external hemorrhoids. It's going to help to heal those tissues. Uh, slip around is an excellent tool. Uh, nettle. Who's ever used nettle? So I was in uh, Alaska and Sunday morning. It was the first Sunday morning we were there. And it's really cool. There's this little, there's this little doctor. She's, I mean, she's about this tall. I mean, she's short. She's from Canada. And she's in the little town there outside of Anchorage. And, uh, and she does natural medicine. And so if you've got high blood pressure and you don't want to take drugs, go talk to her. If you've got diabetes and you don't want to take drugs, go talk to her. It's so neat to have that kind of a situation. Well, she came over to the house that we were staying at, and she brought in these leaves and uh, set them down. And I said, what you got? She says, breakfast. I said, what is it? She says, nettle. And she was holding them. She just picked them that morning. Uh, who's ever 
Dá nem vamos estar em Nel. Vamos estar em Nel. Vamos estar em Nel. E ela pegou um fogo de fogo, ou como vocês dizem, um fogo de fogo. Ela pegou um fogo de fogo, e ela colocou água em ela, e ela só cozinhou. E eles estavam bem. Eles não eram muito bem, mas estava bem. Very nutritious. We're told that nettle is probably the most nutritious herb in North America, all of North America. Um, what do we use it for? Uh, if you're having hormone problems, the adrenals can, can mess up your hormones. And this is excellent for your adrenals. If you're having problems with osteoporosis, osteopenia, and you're looking for some more calcium, this is loaded with calcium. If you're having allergy problems, it's great for allergies. Now, if you were in Asia, China, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, and uh, and let's say that uh, let's say you had an asthmatic attack, they would take and strip you from the waist up and whoop your chest and whoop your back with stinging nettle. When the asthmatic attack stopped, they would then dig a hole and bury you. <laughs> and on your head sticking out. And the dirt or the clay will pull that stinging out. But uh, nettle is, is just an amazing uh, herb that uh, is very beneficial for us. <coughs> Who's ever heard of calendula? Now, high political folks say calendula. But uh, calendula. Um, is, is a great little tool. My youngest son, Carson, who's now 30, but when he was a young boy, I'd go and pick up hive uh, from the next town over. Y'all ever seen that flag that's, that has a rattlesnake on it? It's yellow in color. It says, don't tread on me. Do you know what the backstory of that is? It was the Minutemen of Culpeper. Culpeper, Virginia, during the Revolutionary War. And Y'all have rattlers up here? No. Rattlesnakes, they don't come hunting. They're out there just sunning. They're doing fine. They don't mess with you until you come up and start to walk on them and, and mess with them. But before they bite you, what do they do? They rattle and say, leave me alone. Go somewhere else. I'm here sunning. Just go on somewhere else. That is exactly what the Minutemen were telling Great Britain. We're minding our business. Going back over to England before we bite you. <laughs> That's what the sign meant. That's literally what they had in the intent of that sign. Well, we I'd gone up to Culpepper to get a hive and stapled it good. Anybody do these? No. Anybody done these? Stapled it good. You know, yeah, you staple it and put the screen on the front and everything is honky dory and, and it was fine. I put it in, the, in a, our station wagon and here we go heading home. And then Carson says, I just got stung. Well, okay, I get stung. You know, I, I handle bees. And he says, Dad, I, my, my face is swelling. And then I stopped and looked, and his face was swelling across, uh, swelling across here. His eye then starts swelling. His nose starts swelling. And we were right by the office, so I whipped into the office, and there was a lady there that was helping us, doing a local tenant out of uh, Venezuela. She's Colombian. But she was living in Venezuela at the time. Uh, Dr. Uh, um, Nelsie Restrepo. Have you ever heard of Dr. Nelsie Restrepo? Fabulous lady. Fabulous. And uh, she knows those herbs from South America. And so she's, she says, let me see. And so she went and got some calendula, put, it on a, put some water in a pot, made a quick tea, and then she got a paper towel and started daubing his face. Just, just kept daubing it. And it already started crossing over to this side. He was starting, you know, you could tell he was, you know, was breathing. And, and then all of a sudden it could come back and it totally went away. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? And that's what it was right there. Calendula is good for uh, yeast or thrush. You know, when, when people have thrush. For babies, I use calendula. For adults, I use patiarco, which is stronger. But I use the um, I use the uh, calendula for uh, for infants. Um, it's good for cancer. It's a cancer killer. It's a blood purifier. This is really cool. If an herb 
is a cancer killer. It's also a blood purifier. If a herb is a blood purifier, as I as I started studying herbs and looking at herbs and what kills cancer, what it does purification, it, it, kept, it was just like a straight line. They do the same thing. That's pretty neat. They're in the family of the marigolds. It also has lutein in it. What's lutein good for? It's for your eyes. So calendula tea is good for lutein for your eyes. The golden seal, I use golden seal for a number of things. Uh, it's a great tool to have in your, uh, in your kitchen. Oh, I'm trying to think. What did that lady come in for this week? I only got her just a little bit. Um, I don't remember. One of her children had something. Let's say you get pink eye. Anybody seen someone with pink eye? Uh, or how about an eye infection? I had a problem um, several months ago. I'd taken a contact out, and it was bothering me, and I stupidly did not clean it well. I know better than that. And I just washed it off and put it back in, and I didn't really clean it off good. And my eye got as red as could be. Well, I was going by to see a friend of mine. He's an optometrist. And I said, what do you, what do you think about my eye? And he looks at it, and he goes, your eye's infected. I said, yeah, that's what I thought. And so I went back, and I took a, an eighth of a teaspoon, an eighth of a teaspoon, to an ounce of water, and I made a tea. And um, let it sit for 30 minutes, and, I, and then I poured it through a paper towel. I don't have a, co a coffee strainer. A coffee strainer is the best thing to use for that. I mean, that's the only thing a coffee strainer is good for. And, um, but a coffee strainer is good for pouring things to strain to use in the eye. And so the problem with the paper towel is it wicks so much, you lose a lot of, of your material up into the, uh, into the paper towel. And so I just went and um, I don't remember if I did it or Mary did it. One of us did. And just pour some, some uh, you, can, you can take a spoon. I had a spoon over here. You can take a spoon and just pour it in your eye. You can take a medicine dropper. Or you can take the, the blade of a butter knife and just pour it in there. Yes? What herb are you talking about? Golden seal. And um, boom, I only had to do one, one application. The infection went right away. Wow. Um, if you have, uh, I, had a, I had a tooth, this tooth right here. I, they put a crown on it back in the, in the late 70s. And it had, the tooth underneath cracked. And my face swelled up just like a chipmunk. And so I went down to the dentist and I said, you need to get in here and see what's wrong with this thing. He said, I can't do a thing until that infection is gone and the swelling's gone. Okay. He says, here, here's a prescription. And I, and I said, well, I don't do prescriptions. He said, you're going to need to. He, he says, it ain't going to heal. And I said, how long is it going to take? He says, at least five days. Said, okay. So I got something back at the office, and he goes, "Ain't gonna work." So I went back, threw it in the trash, and I used gold seal and myrrh. I put, um, I took a teaspoon of gold seal, a teaspoon of myrrh, and I made a um, a um, a tea. And I swish it every two hours and swallow it, swish it and swallow it every two waking hours, and the infection was plum gone. And three days. Now y'all know what plum means. Yeah. I mean it's totally. <laughs> and it was totally gone in three days. And I went back down there and I said, okay, fix it. And he goes, I can't believe it. He said, never have I seen it go away in three days. Uh, and, uh, and and so it, it's amazing. The uh, what I you know what? I told you wrong. I told you wrong. I used Alimed for that situation. I used Alimed for that situation. I was wrong. For my, I've used it on other teeth. I've used the golden seal, and it works good. Um, for wounds, I put it in wounds. Um, there's there's an herb in the mountains, uh, in, in, in the Appalachia, it's called yellow root. Yellow root. But if you ask for it, they won't know what you're asking for. You have to ask for yellow root. 
Because they, they don't go with yellow ribbons. Um, like old yellow? No. Um, you can, only place I can buy it is over in Cherokee, North Carolina, from the Cherokee Indians. Or you can just go pick it. But yellow root and golden seal are um, Siamese twins. They're very, very similar. And you just go out there and pick it, and you have the same thing as gold. So let's say you have strep throat. Take a teaspoon, put it in a glass of water, make a tea out of it, uh, gargle it every two hours, and swallow it. And usually strep throat is gone within 24 hours, 48 at the longest. Is um, Morgan Briggs the same too? Oh, that's a very good question. Morgan yeah. Drake is called Poor Man's Golden Seal. Yes, sir. Y'all heard of Oregon grapefruit? Do the same thing. Yes. Uh, if you have an ear infection, I'll take a, uh, I had a teaspoon over here. I'll take a teaspoon, here it is, and I'll put, um, I'll fill it full of olive oil. Well, I'll fill about 70% olive oil. And then I'll take some golden seal, about equal to what would be in a half a capsule. And I'll put it in there and mix it. You want it as high of viscosity as possible, but you yet want it to still drip. And you, don't, you don't want it to cake in here. And then what you'll do is, if it's an infant, you'll take and uh, you'll put two drops in the ear. If it's a, an older child or an adult, you put three drops in the ear. And you rub it like you'd rub something down in a dog chair. And then, you know those things that fellas put in their pockets, those hot pocket things? You take one of those and break it, and you put that on the ear, and then put a toboggan on the ear, and I think, you know, a little, you know what a toboggan is, a little hat, and uh, you put that on the ear, and that will, uh, it's not this thing y'all ski on here, uh, but um, you, you put that on there, and you put that in there every two hours. Uh, I had a guy come in one time, and his ear was plumb closed just like this, with an ear infection. And um, oh, he was in much pain. And so I made the formula, and I took a medicine dropper, and I pushed it as much as I could, and, and put it in there, rubbed it, put the heat on it, and just kept doing it, kept doing it. Now, what do you think the first thing I did? Pray. I prayed. Because never a bit of this works by itself. Only God does the healing. And we prayed that God would bless it. And I kept doing it and just kept doing it. And it took maybe, normally an ear infection is gone within, it can be gone in a half a day, as much as a day. For him, we, it probably took almost three days. But it, I mean, it's plumb closed up. But God blessed it and it healed that ear infection. Yes, sir. Sorry, can you, for otitis externa or otitis? I don't know which you have. Really because it's for otitis media, which is like surfers, or you go swimming, and yes. then you get an infection in the skin and the ear canal versus the ear. At the, in, in the, the inner, inner ear. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm, I would venture say it was the outer, not inside. Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, so, Golden Seal is really good. Burr. Who's ever used mar? Yes, ma'am. Can I ask a follow-up question? Would the garlic oil treat the inner ear? Yes, I would do that one more pee up pee by mouth, like the alamed by mouth, so it gets in systemically and treats it like an antibiotic. On the inner ear, that's what I would do. And so on the alamed, we'll do like a teaspoon of BID twice a day. And that way it gets in there and it's going to act more like that antibiotic on the inside. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. People do that. Yes, Ms. Hirsch, her, what she said is, does mullen grow here? Yes. Oh, that's, that's a tremendous herb. It's the best herb for the lungs. It's great. Um, and so they'll... People will take those blossoms. They also use them for pain, but they'll use them and and they will use them for an ear infection. Yes. But mullen, you just take it and, and y'all ever collect mullen? Yeah. You just take it and 
what we do is we just pick it and dry it like tobacco, and, and, um, and when it dries out, then you know, put it up. Um, I was told that you can also um, use Hmm? <laughs> you can. You can. Um, but just like a statin drug, which can lower your cholesterol, um, it, it wipes out your, your CoQ10, it wipes out your, your chemical that helps with memory. So there's some side effects on statin drugs. There's a side effect of smoking, mulling, and that smoking is an irritant to the lungs. And so I would rather use something else. I'd still use the mullet, but I probably wouldn't smoke it because the smoking can be an irritant. Um, and so I'd probably, just, I'd, I'd make a tea out of it or an extract. I'd use, um, uh, I'd use garlic. Garlic is a great bronchial dilator. Uh, it's good for the lungs. Um, eucalyptus essential oil, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Great tool for the lungs. Lobelia is another one, great for the lungs. But I probably wouldn't smoke it. Yes, ma'am. You're talking about an extract, though. So is that when they add, um, like, how do you make the extract? I'll come to that in a few minutes. Okay. Yes. I only had a few things up here. Mary goes, you got to hurry. How long do we have? As long as you should need. You got until 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, okay. So we have an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, good. I could just keep going. I know y'all got, we got to eat the bed. Um, <laughs> But Mer, I had a lady come in one time, and she, just a little short lady, and she came in, and she was squalling, and she said, I said, what's wrong? And uh, she says, I just went to the dentist, and y'all know what squalling is, don't you? Yeah. Crying. And, uh, and so I said, what's wrong? And she said, um, she said, the doctor told me I've got to have every tooth in my head taken out. She says, every tooth's water. And she said, remember when we were children and we went to school and we had one tooth loose and we'd eat that peanut butter sandwich, peanut butter and jelly sandwich at school, and it hurt so bad and you have to eat it over on the other side? She says, every tooth is that way in my head. She says, I can't eat anything. All I can do is, is take soup. And she says, I don't have $3,000. And she says it's going to cost $3,000 to take every tooth out and put the cheapest set of dentures in and stick in it. I said, well, let's pray. So we prayed. And, uh, and so what we did is we, uh, we took gold, one teaspoon of golden seal, one teaspoon of myrrh, and we made a infusion, a tea, and, um, and I told her to swish really good and hard <coughs> for two minutes, four times a day, and swallow it. And in between, in between times, take pine sap. Who's ever used pine sap? Pine sap's on the name. <clears throat> Put pine sap on it. And actually, um, I thought, I wonder what pine sap would do. So I called a lady, actually, who was from this neck of the woods. She's recently died of, of cancer. But she lived up in y'all's area. She lived in Coeur d'Alene for a while and up, up in this area. And um, she was a, a dental hygienist. And I said, what do you think about using, I told her the situation, I said, what do you think about using pine sap? She says, that's a good idea. That would be good. I said, good. So we did. And so in between each of those four times, she would rub pine sap in her gums. And uh, she, so she did this. She would swallow it, swallow the golden silver bar for two weeks. She would spit it out for two weeks. Swallow it for two weeks, spit it out for two weeks. Now, why was she spitting it out? We didn't want to lose the efficacy. And so, so we still got the medicinal benefit topically here, but from swallowing it systemically, I only wanted to do it for two weeks, stop two weeks, and then go another two weeks because I didn't want to lose that benefit systemic, systemically. She came back in six weeks later, and she came in and she went, <laughs> I said, Regina, what happened? She said, I just left the dentist. He says, there's no infection. None. Every tooth just saw as good. And that was in 2005. And she still has her teeth today. And so, isn't, it, isn't, it, isn't that cool? It really is. How little things you could have in your kitchen that would take care of you. Now, I haven't 
use the Alamed for that. It may. It may. Alamed is just amazing. It really is. Um, good. <laughs> do y'all want to do a facial? Y'all want to do a facial? Okay. Can you help me out a little bit? So let's. We're going to do a quick facial. It's a. Who's ever done a white strap molasses facial? <laughs> Anybody like to do it? Okay. So you want a partner, and your partner will put it on your face, and then you'll, if they'll let you, you'll put it on their face. And so, how many do we need to make? How many we got? One, two. Three. Well, y'all want to do it? Well, we can just make up a little bit, and if y'all want more, more of y'all want to do it, we'll make up some more. All right. <laughs> And so what you're going to do is you're going to do the forehead down, around, don't get on the neck. Uh, you don't want to drip on your clothes. You're going to get it if you've got a mustache. Don't stick it on your mustache. <laughs> put on your nose and just all this area here, you're going to put that, that black strap molasses on there. And we're going to leave it for 30 minutes. <laughs> and then you're going to wash your face off. <laughs> don't pay attention. <laughs> it's no, it's black strap molasses. Black strap has more nutrition in it than grandma's molasses. Now grandma's molasses tastes better. How many? How many we got? Okay, come on. Come on, run and get you my molasses. Uh, however, you want to do it. Or let's get another. We can put it in another. Another. Uh, here you go. But they don't take much. Yeah, and just put it on there. Yeah, it won't take much. If you need more, come back here, son. Okay, any more? No, this is serious? That's yeah, serious. Your face is going to be a lot. It's going to, your face will be softer. Yeah. Now, if you want to really do it right, and I used to do this, I don't anymore. Uh, it just takes more time. But get bentonite clay and mix it with water. It's best to do it the day before. Uh, you, you, it, it's smoother. Now, y'all women are different than we are. Um, we would, uh, fellas don't like men doing stuff on And uh, we would, uh, we had male therapists taking care of men and female therapists taking care of women. And it was a three-week three program. People came from all over the world for this program. Mm -hmm. And we did hydrotherapy and massage therapy. And the last day of the program, the folks got to choose which therapy they wanted. Did they want a... Uh, did they want a, a fever treatment? Did they want a massage? Did they want uh, a, a, a repulsive treatment? What do they want? Overwhelmingly, the women liked this treatment. And where the therapist would, only thing on them was their underwear, and they would put it their whole, from here down to their toes. And put, and they would put bentonite clay. Uh, and it's, it's, it's like a facial cream and they would put that on there and then they would um, we had a, a roof area kind of like Battle Creek which you could uh, get sun and no one would see you and we just bake them for 30 minutes <laughs> and uh, they would come back down and they'd wash off now in South America if you go to the lifestyle center they have they have rooms that are for washing off with, with big old three inch pipes so that it don't get clogged up with the clay. Regular pie, our pipes can get clogged up, so we washed them off where, you know, uh, where it wouldn't clog up the pipe. But the ladies loved it. But fellas don't like them pouring another fella in the morning and doing that kind of stuff. <laughs> so the uh, but bentonite clay will pull out toxins. It's excellent. Like, I had a lady come in one time, and she was... They speak about the color of this man's shirt. 
uh, orange. Yeah, her eyes, her face was an orangey yellow. What was wrong with her? Jaundice. Uh, she, and her, she had gone to her physician that day, and she came to crying, and she said, my doctor said, there's nothing else that they can do. I'm dying. And I said, well, let's pray. And we prayed. And so we did, um, what do you think we did? We did, yes. We did that to get rid of the jaundice. Uh, no, just... Uh, they did a, a, a bentonite play, just poultice every day, and that pulled that jaundice right out. You can do that with a baby that's born, and their jaundice, you can put this on them, and they don't have to have the light. You can just use this, and it pulls it right out. Um, but what was their problem? It's liver. Yeah, and so the most important thing she had to do was what? Address the cause. See, if I have... Let's say I take this thing right here. It's greater. And I go and I'm rubbing my arm. What's going to happen? That's going to rip the height off of it. And you come and say, well, let me put some medicine on it. And you put medicine on it. And when you leave, I go to rub it again. And the next day you come and put medicine on it. Is it going to heal? You've got to stop the cause before the medicine can heal it. It's just going to... You're, all you're doing is masking and managing. And so... What was her problem? She was drinking. A lot. She was a wino. Um, literally, she was a wino. And she was a she owned a business in town. A very respected lady, but she liked her wine. And um, so I said, okay, you drank? Yes. You still drinking? No, I stopped. I said, good, you're over 50% of the way. you got to stop the cause. You can't fix it. I have people come in with emphysema, and they want me to fix their emphysema, and they're still smoking. It just don't work that way. And so I said, okay. So we did, what did we use for the liver? No, that was for the jaundice. What did we use internally for the liver? No? Milk thistle. Milk thistle, yes. Milk thistle and dandelion root. Two mLs each, three times a day of each. Um, and that was back in 2005 or six. Still alive today. Mm -hmm. Totally wiped out the cirrhosis of the liver. And uh, she's totally healed up. And it just took care of the problem. Uh, two mLs, three times a day of each. Two milliliters of each, three times a day. The, uh, the dandelion root. Dandelion root is better for liver and kidneys, and dandelion leaf is better for congestive heart failure, for your uh, your, um, your your congestion in the lungs, and your edema in the legs. Uh, the leaf is better for that. Um, how's it feel, y'all? Feel okay? Sticky? Yeah. Pardon? Are to the back on that wall. Okay. So we'll, we'll keep. Who's, who's doing the clock? Who, can someone be a timekeeper? We've had them on for about five minutes. Give us another 25 minutes and let us know. So these are things that you can use herbs for. And there's so many herbs that God has given us. Um, yes? Okay, so the molasses, thank you. So the bentonite clay goes and pulls toxins out and cleans it, cleans the oils out, and just clean, it pulls and cleans. Uh, it's a facial cleaner. The bentonite clay is putting nutrients back in. Uh, I'm sorry, the black, the black, uh, black strap molasses. The black, thank you, black strap molasses. Y'all have taken Mary Lou's place. She's usually here correcting me when I say something like that. So the, the bentonite clay cleans the face, pulls out, draws, and the blackstrap molasses puts in. It's packed full of, of iron, potassium, manganese, uh, magnesium. It's just packed full of nutrients. And that puts those back, in, those, those minerals back into the face. Do the clay first, and that cleans, and then you can then uh, put the uh, blackstrap, and then that will 
put the nutrients in. So what if you use French green? French green clay would be fine instead of the bentonite, yes. And you leave the clay out for 30 minutes? 30 minutes for the clay, 30 minutes for the bentonite, uh, and also for the black strap molasses, yes. If your iron's low, one of the best things I found for low iron is, uh, is, two, is a t uh, tablespoon twice a day of, um, of black strap molasses. When I was sick, one of the problems I had, uh, my hemoglobin, they couldn't get it above uh, 7.1. And uh, so I went from a gastroenterologist that said, well, you're going to die, there's nothing else we can do for you. And to a guy from Loma Linda that did natural medicine. And uh, this doctor said, you know, there's a number of things I did. But to get the R enough, um, he had me taking a tablespoon twice a day of the black strap molasses and the iron came right back up. The hemoglobin came right back up. Is there any kind of indication? Yes. I would not do it on a wound of the black strap molasses or the bentonite clay? No. Oh, for the molasses? Yes. If you have a person that's a brittle diabetic, until you can get that diabetes under control, be cautious on it. Are we talking about diabetes this weekend? Um, not necessarily. No? Okay. So sometimes on the, I don't know. But anyway, you've got to get the root cause of diabetes, reverse the diabetes, and then you can, uh, uh, then you can do it. But that, that's the item I'd, I'd be cautious on. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, the group, we started the class Friday, and it's a two-week program over in Rwanda. It's from 8 in the morning to 5 in the evening. And the last two times I was there, I had a lady, one of the times I had a lady come in, and her glucose was right at 400. She was on insulin metformin. Um, in two weeks, she was off insulin, off metformin, and her glucose was 124. Uh, the next, the other time I was there, the other time, I forgot which one, no, that was the time before last, the last time I had a lady, I also was in that 400 range, and she, heard she was on insulin metformin, and in 14 days she was off the insulin, off the metformin, and her glucose was 115. Isn't that cool? Pardon? Uh, that's what I need, I need to share with y'all sometime. Pardon? Tomorrow? Tomorrow night? Okay, tomorrow night. Come tomorrow night and I'll talk about it. Um, but um, it, it's pretty cool. The first 20 years of my career, zero. Zero. And when I left corporate healthcare and I told corporate that I was going to an industry that could reverse diabetes, they looked at me and told me I was crazy. They said, well, you're crazy. You're going to ruin your reputation. I don't care. And then I, you know, sometimes Mary says, I don't quit talking. And I said, but not even type 2. You can even improve type 1. And then they looked at me and told me, they said, Walt, you are stupid. <laughs> that cannot be done. Don't do that. You're going to ruin your career. Well, guess what? I went to a clinic. We had over a 98% reversal rate of type 2 diabetes. And it's not uncommon to see a type 1 go from 60, 80 units of insulin down to 5 or 10 units of insulin. Is it plum reversed? No. But it's a whole lot better. A whole lot better. I just haven't figured that one out yet. I'm still working on that. Mm -hmm. Yes? Is this facial helpful for people who are struggling with uh, uh, skin diseases such as um, eczema, rosacea? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The question is, is is this facial good for, you know, some of the skin issues that people have, you know, this uh, eczema and psoriasis and, you know, rosacea and all? It's, I don't believe it's going to hurt it. it. I think the molasses would be better than the bentonite clay. But the root cause, we used to use calendula. And it worked fairly well for those problems. And we use oatmeal. But in 2008, who's heard of Dr. Agatha Thrash? I called her and I said, Dr. Agatha, I said, uh, it ain't working no more. And she says, Walt, what are you doing? And I told her, she says, well, that's what we used to do, but it don't work no more. And I said, why? She said, our wheat is so contaminated, it's affecting it. See, in, in Europe, their wheat is 14 chromosomes. Back 
a couple months ago when Marilyn and I were in Sweden for two weeks, we could eat all the bread we wanted. And it didn't bother either at all. There's 14 chromosomes. Plus, it's illegal over there for them to spray it with Roundup. Mm -hmm. Ours here is 42 chromosomes and it's sprayed with Roundup. And even the einkorn wheat, I've sent two batches of einkorn wheat off and had them tested and they were 42 chromosomes. Mm -hmm. The problem is now I have more einkorn wheat, but I can't find anybody willing to test it. That's interesting. None of the schools that used to test it will test it now. Um, but um, so that's the big issue. Is is I, and so Dr. Agatha said just one cracker will kick on eczema, rosacea, psoriasis for for two and a half, two to two and a half months. One bite of birthday cake mm -hmm. and kick it down the road another two, two and a half months. Arthritis also. And so the most effective thing I have found when people come into me with those skin issues is I encourage them to just go gluten free. It's nothing I sell, nothing I, you know, just go home and be total gluten free for four months. And they come back and that is the most effective thing I have found. It's just not what God made. Yes? What about acne? Is that um, bentonite look for that? For like teenagers? I would go, it, it would definitely help, yes. I, the bentonite would more so, uh, but also the um, the Podiarco is good and the Chaparral is good. I'll, on Chaparral, I'll do uh, three capsules three times a day for the high school kids and for ladies in their 20s and 30s that are having hormone issues, and it will clean that blood right out. But Podiarco will do the same thing. You can put the Podiarco on topically, and you can also take Podiarco internally. Can you repeat how much? On the Podiarco? Oh, the chaparral. chaparral, three capsules, three times a day. The kids are not going to drink it, I promise you. It's nasty. Um, let's talk a little bit about, um, before we leave the herbs, let's talk about infusions and decoctions. Infusions and decoctions. Herbs are like men and women. Women are delicate. Or they should be. They're delicate. Now, when I was in Sweden, women didn't want me to open the door for them. But yet they wanted to open the door for me. They were just messed up. <laughs> I mean, ladies, let men take care of you. You know, God, we're supposed to take care of y'all. Y'all supposed to take care of us. We got our different responsibilities. But um, I don't know if I'm getting in trouble here, but anyway, I'm from the big south. Um, and that's the way we're raised. But ladies are more delicate. Men, you got to hit us over the head with two by four. And we're heart right, see? Yeah. And so if it is something delicate like a flower or a or a, a leaf or a stem, you don't want to do a decoction where that is simmering it. You want to bring the water to a bowl, plumb turn it off, and then just let it steep. Or you can make y'all y'all know what sun tea is. You could do a sun tea, but you don't want to cook it. It's too delicate. You'll, 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 you'll lose too much nutrients that you're after, those phytochemicals. And you're wanting those for medicinal benefit. Now, the stuff that is more like a fella is the, the roots and the barks and the hard berries like elderberries. Uh, don't try to... You know what elderberries are? Is any, don't try to grind it up in your, in your uh, uh, blender, your, those little bullets. I broke the blades off of it. They're so hard. Uh, those guys need to have a decoction. And what you do with that is you bring it to a bowl, turn it down to a, a simmer, and then you simmer it for 20 minutes. And then you can strain it and drink it. But what if you want to combine two? You want that, let's say you want to combine a, uh, a bark and, a, and a, uh, a flower. And you want to put it in the same tea. Real simple. Do a decoction first. Bring it to a bowl. Turn it down to a simmer. Put in your potty arco for 20 minutes. Plumb turn it off. And then put your, your delicate herb in there. And let it sit there for 30 minutes. Now you've done a decoction. Now you've done an infusion. And you've done the two of them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That works good. So those are ways that I do herbs like that. So you can make teas. You can put them in capsules. And let me share this. Let's say it's, it's, it's um, hawthorn berry 
425 milligrams per capsule. That is not strength. That is weight. And the way you get that number is you take a thousand capsules and weigh them. And then you fill a thousand capsules and you subtract the weight of the capsule. Now you have the weight of the herb that's in a thousand capsules and you divide it by a thousand. And now you know the average weight of each capsule. The strength is not an equation in herbs. So if you have an herb, a, a, a capsule of hawthorn berry that's two, three years old, it's not as strong as a hawthorn berry that's recently done. Because the herbs are going to lose their potency. It doesn't mean they go bad. It's just they lose the, the strength. And so that's why you don't want to hoard up a whole bunch of herbs. Um, because you'll lose strength. So what do you do to, for your herbs? Let's say that you've got, you've got mullein. And you want that mullein to last longer. How, how many of y'all put food up? Okay. So put your herbs up. And the way you put your herbs up is you make an extract. Or you can make a tincture. I don't do tinctures. I was flying this morning from Knoxville to, to um, Denver. And the girl I was sitting by used to work at the Moonshine Mill right beside my number two fire hall, my station two fire hall down on the interstate. Um, moonshine's illegal in Tennessee now. So it's a big thing. Making money. Actually, Moonshine and Sevier County makes more money, tax revenue, than all of Dolly Parton's product, properties. They are millionaires. The moonshine folks. Why is it okay? Because they now you can do you, if you tax it now it's legal. But this girl, she's riding with me, and uh, her degree is in making moonshine. She has a four-year degree in making moonshine. Isn't that amazing? So you can make a tincture which has alcohol. Now, where I live, they put moonshine in, and they make it with moonshine. Um, but um, normally folks go down to the liquor store, and they'll buy vodka, and they'll make it. I don't care much for the alcohol ones. Um, I just rather not use the alcohol if I don't have to. And so an extract, so a tincture is alcohol. An extract is vegetable glycerin. And here's how you make it. So... Let's say we'll use, oh, we'll use my glass here. This is a good example with that amount of water in. Don't do what I did the first time when I started making extracts. So I was making a, an extract of wild lettuce. And um, so I filled my mason jar. It was a quart, plum full, up to here. And then I started putting my liquid in there. <laughs> Why are you shaking your head? <laughs> it don't work, does it? I ended up digging that stuff out and doing two mason jars. Uh, <laughs> you just learn by your mistakes. So you want it somewhere, depending on your plant material, somewhere in here. And so then you're going to pour a combination of vegetable glycerin and distilled water. Do not have less than 65% vegetable glycerin or pathogen growth can occur. It's got to be over 65%. Most people will do 70%. Some people stay around the 65. Uh, people go to 70 because they want to be a little safer. It's a little easier to figure 70 and 30. 30% is the distilled water. 70% vegetable glycerin. Uh, the reason people will go 60, 35 is because the more glycerin you use, the sweeter it is. They may not want the sweetness of 70%. So they drop to 65. Drop below 65 and you're flirting with pathogen growth. And you don't want pathogen growth. And so you, you take that and you put it in a container and you mix it up really good. And then uh, you go and uh, once you make oil and water, don't mix good. And so you have to mix it real good. So then you take that combination. You've got your plant material in here somewhere around here. The goal is you want to be one inch higher than the plant material with your vegetable glycerin, but you want to be at least an inch below the top because you need to shake it. 
So you add your, 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 your liquid to your uh, one inch above. But what's going to happen? What happens when, yeah, it's going to swell. What happens when you soak beans overnight? You've got to put more water in it. Well, you're going to have to put more of this glycerin stuff in it. And you keep doing that until it, it equalizes out and it's plum saturated and, and, you're, and you are one inch above. That's why be careful. Don't put a lot of herb. And each plant material is a little different. And so as you make them, start low, and you can add more if you need to, but some plants soak more than others do. So what do you do? You done that? And then you take it and you shake it. And you set it in the cupboard and close the door because you want it in the dark. And, then, and so let's say that's in the afternoon. Uh, you put it in there. Then the next morning, you're going to shake it. And then I turn it upside down. That evening, I'm going to shake it. Oh, 15 seconds. Don't, doesn't have to be too long. And then I set it right side. And I do that twice a day for 30 days. For 30 days. Um, I, I, have to, I get things that means... Sometimes I have a fire, so I have to make sure it's going on. And so, uh, but let's say you want you don't have time. Let's say you're making elderberry syrup, and folks are sick, and you don't have a month to do it. Well, you can make it in three days instead of 30 days. And so you take a crock pot, turn it plumb low, and some go low, low. You don't want to scald it or burn it. And so you need a crock pot that goes really low. And so you can make up several of them, and then you just take your crock pot, put water in it, put your washcloth in it, and set your containers in it, and you're twice a day, again, still you shake it for twice a day. Be cautious though. Don't have a schedule like mine where you, you leave, go to work at 5.36 in the morning, and then you get in whenever, and your water could have evaporated down. And if it evaporates down, you're gonna burn your, your plant material. And so you want to keep that up. You're going to put that water somewhere around halfway, and you want to keep that water at least a, a, a fourth of the way. And, and um, you just do that for three days. When you're done, whether it's the 30 days or the three days, you take it and um, you'll take and um, pour it through a kitchen strainer, and you can leave it overnight through, you know, for a whole 24 hours, whatever, and it will strain and, and drain out into that into that uh, mason jar or whatever. Then you take your plant, we'll take a bag, and I'll clip the edge of the bag just a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit, and I'll put my plant material in there. Then I'll squeeze it. Who's ever milked a cow? Okay, like milking a cow. Or who's ever done cake icing? Or you can do it like cake ice, and you squeeze it, keep squeezing it and squeezing it until you get it all out. Throw that away. And now you have your, your glycerin, uh, your extract. You can then pour it into dark bottles. Why do you want dark bottles? Keep the light out. And then you want to write on it. One, you want to write what is it. If you don't write what it is, you might forget what you got in there. You're going to put a date on it. And uh, you're going, and then you're going to identify: is it single? Is it is it single strength or double strength? Now, how do you make double strength? Now, double strength, what you do is just the opposite. First time when we made single strength, what did we put in there first? Plant material. We put the plant material first. Then we added the vegetable glycerin and the water. The when you make double strength. You put your liquid in first, and then you slowly add in some plant material. Don't get it aggressive, or you'll soak it all up in that plant material and soaked all your liquid up, and you, and you lost it. And so you want to keep doing it, and then as it keeps soaking, so you're going to be way, way below that one inch line. And, uh, and then you want to net that one Excuse me just a second. Harold, you okay? 
Okay. Okay. Can you call Walter for me? Okay. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. He's my assistant fire chief, and he has a lot of health problems, and it is uh, eight, nine, ten something there. So sometimes I have to go help him out with his health issues. So I apologize. Um, and so what you do is you'll um, is you will um, you'll when you finally finish out soaking all that plant material with that uh, that extract, you need to be one inch below it, and then you'll shake it and do another 30 days or another three days, and then you strain it the same way. Now you have double strength extract. That makes sense? Because you use two plant materials, you've done it twice. And so you've gotten the, the nutrients or the phytochemicals out of two batches of plant material. So you make an extract. Here's an extract. Elderberry. Who's done elderberry? Who's had elderberry extract? Amazing tool. It, the elderberry extract is just phenomenal for our immune system. There's other extracts. Um, I'll do. Uh, I'll get guys to come in and they'll have uh, prostate issues, and um, so I'll have them do two ml's of uh, of um, Podiarco at least once a day, and uh, and then um, teaspoon twice a day of black. I didn't bring it. Of black seed oil, and it shrinks that prostate right down. It's amazing. Works extremely well. And, there's a, and so what happens is when you make, say, this elderberry extract, if you just had elderberries, they're going to be fully potent about mm, six months. But then you're going to start losing nutrients. And so you put them up, just like you put up your green beans or your, or your corn or your tomatoes or whatever. You put it up. Now it's going to last an easy two and a half, three years. Plus, if you go somewhere... It's real easy to carry, especially if it's just a one ounce bottle. Yes, ma'am? What is black seed oil? Is that like? Black seed oil or black cumin. Or, or, or it, it's a, it's a, a, an oil that's just super good for the immune system. Um, it, uh, I, I sell it to the ladies in, Car in the Caribbean, the black women. Their hair is a little different than ours. It's a little dry, and it makes their hair real pretty. It's really good for their hair. Um, externally? Is that like externally, just put it on their hair. Sesame seed? Black it's, it's, sesame back, it's black <coughs> cumin. <coughs> yes. Nigella. Pardon? Nigella? Nigella? Nigella. I, I can't, it may be. I don't know. It could be. Yes. I thought it was interesting. I read the other day that Mohammed said that black seed would heal everything but death. I have heard that before. I didn't know that was him. But I've heard black seed will heal everything but death. I didn't know it was Muhammad. Mm. Yes. And that is that's a common saying. Mm -hmm. Yes. When you say put up the extract like the can it's either like canning water bath it or pressure cooking, what are you talking about? Uh, well you know how you put your food up, you know, for canning. Yeah, but the whole well, you need a water bath. Exactly. But just the concept of putting up. The concept of somehow canning. It. Pardon? Somehow stealing it. No, just, just the philosophy of, of canning your food or freezing your food just to put it up versus the, the philosophy of putting up herbs so they last longer. Yes? Okay, let's do the mask. Let's go in there and wash your face off. All right, we've got a couple folks that need to wash your face. Yes, ma'am. Regarding um, nettle, I took a class and I, I thought the lady said that if you wanted to use it for allergies, it needed to be fresh, that you couldn't dry it and then make a tincture or an extract. Did it need to be fresh? Have you heard that? Or will it, it, works, dry? it works very well for allergies dry. Oh, good. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. So about the elderberry, we have a lot of it for in wild. Yes. You can do 
you fresh, and you can do what the old mountain women do where I'm from. They'll put it in baggies, yeah. and they'll put it in the freezer. Yeah. And then they'll pull out a baggie worth one dose, put it in, in, to make it, and then they'll make a tea out of it. Yes. So you, you can... think drying it makes it better? I haven't seen any statistics on that, so I don't know. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Can you speak to an oxymel? Tell me what an oxymel is. Oxymel is uh, honey and raw honey and apple cider vinegar. Okay. Like a fire cider, or I've done that with elderberries as well. Yes. You don't have to cook it. You don't have to. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, the honey is good. I'm going to make something in a minute out of honey that's good for the immune system. I don't like sugar. Some people put sugar in it to make it taste better, but why are you using it? You're using it for the immune system. The sugar wipes out your immune and anesthetizes. Sugar, a 12-ounce can of soft drink, will anesthetize 50% of the white cells for four hours. Add a Snickers bar to it, like when we were kids. Not today, but we were kids. <laughs> and now you've anesthetized 13 out of 14 white cells, and you put like blinders on them for four hours. They aren't working for four, you know, for four hours. So I don't like sugar, but the the honey is good. I like the honey. Um, the the vinegar. Be cautious on the vinegar. Vinegar can uh, can irritate the mucosa. Vinegar has a lot of good benefits. I grew up with it in our house. My daddy used it all the time. But I've since learned that vinegar can irritate mucosa. And there's a couple organs you got to really protect: the brain, the heart, and the stomach. And, and so, you, the enzyme, you can have enzyme, the mucosa makes enzymes in the second part of the digestion in the stomach, and you don't want to make those guys mad and not do their job. And so I'm cautious on vinegar. I just don't want to, to damage the mucosa. Yes? When you were talking about the hot water, it's ordered 25 milligrams per capsule. What if the bottle says that they are standardized? Okay. Which means they're supposed to have that much in each capsule. That's correct. So the question is, how did they standardize them? There's two ways of standardizing. You can standardize it by, like Gaia does, Gaia Herbs out of um, Bavard, North Carolina. And they literally measure the, the phytochemicals in there to make sure they have Uh, so yes, there can be standardized, but see how they standardize it. Yes, ma'am. I've been freeze drying my herbs, and the color is just so vibrant. I love freeze drying. Freeze drying is is that's the way to go. It really is. the least nutrients in freeze drying, I understand. I mean, dehydration was, was the best that I knew, and then freeze drying is even better than, than dehydration. Yes, freeze drying is, is the best way, I think, to do it, drying the herbs. Yes. Okay, so, how do your faces feel? Soft? Feel good? Isn't that cool? Don't the rest of y'all wish you done? <laughs> okay. So, no, we can't do it between meals. <laughs> okay, so, so we either have herbs that are bulk herbs, that we can do teas, we can do, we can do fomentations where we take the tea and make a fomentation with it, or, uh, or poultices, or we can go and put it up making extracts, and, or we can supercharge it, well, I call herbs on steroids. And that is um, essential oils. One drop of peppermint essential oil, you have to drink 28 cups of peppermint tea to get the same medicinal benefit. The challenge, pardon, one drop of peppermint essential oil has the same medicinal benefit as 28 cups of peppermint tea. 
It's just super concentrated. It's either going to be, um, it's mostly either going to be distilled or it's going to be pressed. Most of them are distilled. Um, the problem I have with the essential oils is there's just not enough. I'd love to have wild lettuce uh, as an essential oil. I'd love to have uh, Patiarco as an essential oil. I mean, people just don't do all of them. But essential oils are very, very powerful. Some of my favorite essential oils is what well, my first favorite is this guy right here. This guy is a 44 magnet. Pardon? Oregano. Oregano. Yes. Oregano is just amazing. If I feel like I'm starting to come down with something, you know how you feel like you catch it in the nose and your throat, or you just feel like it's, you know, an elephant sitting on you, and you, you know you're going to get sick. The key is you've got to catch it in the incipient stage. I mean, Tamiflu doesn't work over 48 hours. You've got to catch it in that incipient stage, that beginning stage. And, um, and so, I still fight fires. And I, I have it in my coat, my turnout coat, because I work a lot of wrecks on the interstate. Uh, I was out the other night. Some poor boy got mad at his wife. They got in a fight. Jumps on his motorcycle, drunk as a skunk, tears off down the interstate, weaving in and out of traffic, uh, weaved a little too close to the uh, concrete median, ripped his arm off about right here, and then he got probably, I don't know, from here, past the end of the building before he fell over. And then his motorcycle, it was way on down the road, his helmet came off, it was on the other side. And, um, you know, fortunately I was, I had just finished work, it was 11 o'clock at night, I just finished working a tractor trailer fire and I was just five minutes away from him and um, you know we flew him out but I do that stuff at night and that's a great way to get sick because it lowers your immune system and so I, I'll take and I'll put the oil of oregano in to keep my immune system up. I've got it in my pack that I do wildland fires. I've got it in the car. I've got it on my side of the bed. Mary Lou's got it on her side of the bed so we don't wake each other. Have you ever woke up in the middle of the night and feel like you're getting sick? That's the time to take it. One night I woke up and I looked for it. I didn't have it. Mary Lou, we both run out. What did I do? I got up and I drove 35 minutes. I drove off the mountain, went into work like 2, 3 in the morning because I didn't want to be sick the next day. So I drove in. I took it as soon as I got to work. Drove back up the mountain. Went back to sleep. And had some of the hats. Okay, so all of oregano, you don't want to use it neat. Just plumb by itself if you're going to use it, stick it in your mouth. Uh, put it on your toe, nail, fungus, or that kind of thing, neat. You know, by itself. Neat means by itself. Uh, or, you know. But um, you want to mix it with olive oil. And so you do 25% oil of oregano, 75% olive oil, and that's the way this one's made. And uh, take like three drops under your tongue, sublingually, hold it for as long as you can handle it, and swallow some water. I do 10 drops, don't try it, you don't think I'm trying to kill you, it, it's stout. And so just do what you can do. Um, there's a, who's ever listened to Dr. Bob Martin? I listen to Bob Martin? He, um, he has found that this is the best way that he's found to get rid of mold toxicity, where you live in a house that has mold. He'll do three drops, three times a day, crescendo to 10 drops three times a day, and to some patients, he'll go to 15 drops three times a day. Um, all oregano is just super antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal, works really good. Um, yes? Frankincense. Oh, if in doubt, use frankincense. Yeah. Frankincense is amazing. Um, it's excellent for memory. Um, use it for cancer. It's very, very good on wounds. Uh, I make a wound sap, and I'll take um, I'll take one part frankincense, one part golden seal, one part myrrh, mix it together, add a half to one part based on depending on how much pine sap I have, a half to one part pine sap. And somewhere around one and a half to two parts aloe vera gel. You can use, you can use the liquid, but the gel, I like the consistency of the gel better. Mix it up. And then uh, you want it about the consistency of pancake batter. That's what you're looking for. You don't want it too thick because when you put it on that wound, you're not packing it like beta down and brown sugar. You're, you're just painting it on there. 
and you want it to slough off because you, you just did hydrotherapy, warm and cool, not hot and cold, warm and cool, no hotter than 100, no colder than 70. Uh, three minutes warm, one minute cool. One, three minutes warm, one minute cool, seven times. And then you're going to, if it's infected, like let's say it has osteomyelitis, I'll do one teaspoon twice a day of the Alimed, and then I'll spray the Alimed on there. Then I'll put the salve on there. And then I'll put a charcoal poultice on there and, uh, and do that twice a day. And it's excellent for, for healing wounds. Works very well. Um, so frankincense is part of that. I like, who's ever used um, copaiba? Yeah, yeah. Can you repeat the one part of the golden seal myrrh of frankincense and then what did you add to And then I added um, half to one part, one half to one part uh, pine sap mm -hmm. based on what you have available. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll do somewhere around uh, one and a half to two parts of the aloe vera gel. You just have to look at it. You know, it's kind of like dump cooking at that point to figure out, you know, the consistency you're looking for. Thank you. Can you use oregano capsules? Oregano oil Yes, capsules? you can do oregano oil capsules. I'm a big wimp in that. Yeah, capsule. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And would it still be, you would still do the 25-75% or you could do it? The Those capsules are, are usually mixed with the combination yeah. because you don't want it to unload. Mm -hmm. Plus, you don't want a whole lot. And you don't want it to unload. It's still, it would still irritate the stomach if it was 100%. It, the mouth, the esophagus, and the stomach. You don't want. Pardon? It, it just melts the capsule. Just melts the capsule. Yeah. And so you, you want, you want to take care of what you got. And so you don't want to get too aggressive. Yes, ma'am. So for the wound care, so when you put that salve on there, you're just. It's like you're just putting it on like you're painting it on there. Obviously, don't take a paintbrush and do it. But you're, you're putting it on there not thick because you want it to, when you do the hydrotherapy later on that evening or the next morning, you want that to slough off and so that you can then put new on. And then when you've done the hydrotherapy, Okay, so I'll do the hydrotherapy. Three minutes warm, one minute cool, seven times. If it's infected, I'll spray on Alimed, and then uh, I'll then just put one layer, just one layer of the of the sap, the golden silver myrrh, frankincense, pine sap, and aloe vera, and then I'll put a charcoal poultice. Now, if it's an open wound, you want to put a a piece of a wet paper towel on top of it because you can tattoo, um, and then you then repeat 12 hours later. Um, who's heard of Copaiba? Copaiba is probably the most anti-inflammatory plant uh, phytochemical in the world that we found. Copaiba is just amazing. Uh, C-O-P-I-A-B-A. -A. Some people pronounce it Copaiba. Uh, it, it's however the... Anybody Portuguese? It's a, it comes from Brazil. And it comes from a tree. The trees, they tap them between 30-year-old and 50-year-old. They tap them like maple syrup. And uh, they're very cautious of how much comes out. They're very protective of them. But Copaiba is great for essential trimmers. Um, C-O-P-I-A-B-A. -A. It works very good for epileptic seizures. I've got a guy right now, he's two and a half years into no seizures, no epileptic seizures grandma seizures and before he was having grandma seizures multiple times a week he had to quit driving and quit working he was a building contractor and now he can drive and now he can work um, also some people will take it for um, to sleep they'll put five dro drops under their tongue to go to sleep at night uh, but copa eva is a great uh, a great essential oil another one that's really good something i've been using that is just amazing is uh, lavender which is the number one essential oil in the world, and something called vetiver. Anyone ever use vetiver? V-E-T-I-V-E-R. Vetiver is known as the PTSD uh, essential oil. Um, I was working the, the counter one day, and Mary Lou was gone. I'm helping four ladies. Girl comes walking in, goes back, she's looking at my essential oils, and you know, you, 
you can tell when someone's just not right. And my daddy taught me to tell when cows ain't right. You know, we, I grew up on a dairy farm and they went beef cattle and you look at their eyes, you look at their heads, you look at their gait, you look at their, you can, you can tell if they're sick or not. And you can learn people that way too. And I could tell she just wasn't right. And so I, I told the lady, I said, you know, I need, need to check on this person. So I walked over there, I said, ma'am, are you okay? And she said, I am having the, the worst um, anxiety attack I've ever had. And she was in her mid-twenties. And I said, okay, just a minute. So I told the lady, I'll be back. So I went back and I, I got some vetiver and some lavender and I put it on me first. I put a drop of lavender here before you feel your pulse. And then I rubbed it together and I breathed it. Now I put a drop of vetiver, rubbed it, and I breathed it. And it transdermally goes into the skin, into the blood, like a nicotine patch or a nitro patch. And then as you breathe it, it's going to go into the lungs and then go into the blood. And I said, uh, you want to try it? She says, yes. Now, ask your doctor when you're having an anxiety attack and he prescribes you medication, ask him to try it first. He's probably not going to try it. And so she did. And I said, now, I'll be back in just a minute. i got to finish this lady. It's going to take a couple minutes to work. So I walk back over and I find it. I finished checking this lady out. It had been right at two minutes. And Walter finishes up. He's at the herb cabinet helping the lady. I said, you know, like, now get over help this lady. So he went over to help her, and he started talking to her. And it was a different voice. And, and so I just finished this, and I told that lady, I said, just a minute. It was, I had still had those other three. I said, how you doing? And she said, what did you just do to me? <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? She says, that was the worst anxiety attack I've ever had. It's gone. That quick, she said, what did you just do to me? Well, what did I say? Oh, I just did this. No, God just did that. And see how you can witness to people and show where the power really comes from? And, I said, uh, and so there's so many essential oils that you can use that are so beneficial. Vetiver, lavender and vetiver. Vetiver is just another plant. V-E-T-I-V-E-R. V-E-R. Yes, sir? You're talking about tremors. Does it have any impact on Parkinson's? Yes, it can be beneficial. I'm going to squeal if I come out there. Um, yeah, the copaiba I would use for the Parkinson's. Um, CBD oil is very good for Parkinson's. Get one that is, has no THC, and that works quite well for Parkinson's. Riding a bicycle has been proven to work good. Far infrared, I've had people come in with Parkinson's shaking and use far infrared and they leave and they're not shaking. Um, far infrared sauna can be beneficial for Parkinson's. <coughs> B-complex can help with Parkinson's. Stress can exacerbate. Um, nutrition is important. Sleep is important. Water is important. Exercise is important. Um, and so there's a number of things that we use for Parkinson's. Yes? Do you have a remedy for tinnitus? Now you picked a tough one. <laughs> tinnitus is a tough one. Um, I haven't found a good bat for tinnitus yet. It's kind of weird. Pardon? Manage your stress. Drink plenty of water. Those are important. Um, in Africa, when I, when I go to Africa and I ask, I, I go and ask people, what can I do for tinnitus? And the Africans go, oh, we've got one that works. Works well. Well, it's ginkgo biloba. But it just doesn't work as well here as it does what they claim over there. Um, it's just not a big bat. It might work. There's a product called uh, DiVertigo. And it has like four different uh, essential oils in it. And you can put a drop behind each ear. It works for vertigo very, very well. But some people claim it works well for tinnitus. The best that I've seen from in, in research is, by, is, is in NIH, National Institute of Health. And NIH reco uh, records a study done with something called kudzu. Who's heard of kudzu? Yeah, kudzu. It grows the best in southeast United States. It grows a foot a day. K-U-D-Z-U. And, but what they did in the study was they used IV kudzu, 
Number one, where are you going to find IV kudzu? And number two, where are you going to find a doctor that's going to give IV kudzu? But that is the best results I've ever seen. Yes, ma'am. Sometimes tinnitus can come from a tumor between the ear and the brain and the ankle. Yes. Um, the, inside the skull, there's two things I found that can be beneficial for tumors. One is frankincense. You put a drop on the tip of your thumb, hold it to the roof of the mouth for two minutes, and do that several times a day. And it will cross the blood-brain barrier. And frankincense have been, has been found to help shrink tumors. Another thing is food-grade hydrogen peroxide. Don't use regular peroxide at key. It's toxic. It has a stabilizer that's toxic. You want food-grade hydrogen peroxide, 35%. What you do is you take almond milk, and uh, because it's going to make you nauseous, and almond milk works better than water does. But you take five to six ounces of almond milk three times a day on an empty stomach. Day one, you put three drops in each glass, and increase by three drops each day, three, six, nine, twelve, until you get to 50 drops three times a day. There are people who go as high as 150 drops. You'll get plum sick on that. I don't recommend that. It's very effective. But I don't recommend it. You get too sick. 50 drops even. Some people can't handle them. 30 drops, if you get too sick with 30, just stop. Wherever you can tolerate, some's better than none. But food grade hydrogen peroxide has been found to be beneficial for that. Yes, ma'am? Where would you get your frankincense? Because all these essential oil companies have so much controversy with some, and others are very inexpensive. Yes. That's a very good question. Uh, the question is, what brand do you want to get? Let me, get, let me not get into the brand, but let me get into what you want to look for. You want a... Um, you want it grown in the part of the world that is the most nutritious. Example, if you wanted kudzu essential oil, which they don't have, but if they did, where would you go? The southeast United States. If you wanted lavender, where would you go? Where? France. Um, so you want to go to that part of the world that it grows the best, and many of them grow best down in South America. So you want to go where it's the most nutritious, because you're not after smell here unless you're just wanting a diffuser to smell good, but you're after medicinally the most potent. The next thing you want to do is you want to make sure they, they harvest it, what I'd call vine ripe. Who's ever grown hay? Okay? Daddy would, would pray that it didn't rain when hay was the most nutritious. So it's got like a bell curve. Right? And then you start losing nutrients. Well, that's important on a dairy farm. You want as much nutrients to get the most, most milk out of them cows. Or any, I mean, you want the most nutrients of, of your hay, no matter if you're putting it on horses or goats or whatever. And so you got here. Well, you don't want to, you got a storm coming in, it's going to last a while, you're going to have to cut here. Or you're going to be off the other end before it dries out. Or, it rained, it caught you not knowing, well, you just can't grow, you just can't. You're gonna to have to cut it here and it's gonna lose nutrition. When you my favorite sandwich is a tomato sandwich. Now, do you want that tomato being green? Do you want that tomato squish in your hands? No, you want it just plum right where you can just oh, it's just perfect. That's when you want to eat that tomato. You want that you want that essential oil harvested when it's at the highest nutrition. How do you know? No. That whoever is doing the harvesting has to test it. And they have, they have testing that they do. Well, again, go back to Guy, Guy Erdman. I'm not a big Guy Erd fan because I don't like the word Guy. But their science is very good. I've been there and looked at it. And so you want someone that does the science of when it's harvested where it has the highest nutritional value. You want that company. Um, also, you want one that you can trust that it's plum- Pure. There's a who knows what helichrism is. 
Okay, Helichrysum. I, I had a company, a one ounce bottle, 30 ml, was, was 30 something dollars for Helichrysum. Is that a problem? That's a problem. That's a problem. So I asked the company. I was at in, in Baltimore, Maryland, at a, the big show, over 6,000 vendors. That company happened to be there. I went and asked the guy. He was the director of marketing for the whole company. Y'all would know the company if I said it. And I said, how do you get your helichrysum so economical? He said, we're just good. Mm -hmm. And I had the right answer. I said, uh, what percent of your, heli of your helichrysum is helichrysum? He goes, oh, it's 100%. Of that 30 ml, what percentage of that is helichrysum? 10%. Mm. I said, you just said it was 30, was 100%. He says, yeah, the helichrysum is 100%. Mm -hmm. That's like me saying this room's 100% walk across because I'm 100% walk across. <laughs> you know? Wow. And so you want a, an honest company. There's companies out there that buy their essential oils by the barrels on the open market. Uh, a lot of essential oils say, do not use internally. Well, no, you don't want to because they got all kinds of other stuff in there that you, want to, you don't want to stick inside your body. So you want to find a company that's reputable that meets all that criteria. So who do you purchase from? Yeah. <laughs> I've heard a lot of negative stuff on... Are we online? Yeah. Talk to me later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, don't get me in trouble. I'd get in trouble by that one. Um, how are we doing on time? Oh, see, it's so hard. There was just a few things out here, and I'm not even getting to them. Poultices. Y'all ever done a tater poultice? Yeah, it's great for like, you know, you can take this. And what can you use? I didn't put enough, but what, what could you use it on? Spider bites? Stomach. Stomach problems? What? Bruising? Pull out splinter, splinters, it draws. How about burns? It's great for burns. Yeah, my grandma taught me that. There's all kinds of poultices. There's carrot poultices. There's onion poultices. There's just all kinds. Cabbage poultices are of course you're Romanian. Of course you don't know about cabbage. <laughs> but don't make the mistake I made. I had a guy fly in from, from England, and he had external hemorrhoids, and they couldn't fix him over there. So he flew all across the ocean to us, and, um, and we were doing hydrotherapy, and we were doing poultices, cabbage poultices and various things. But one night, it was time for him to go to bed, and uh, it was 9 o'clock. And he came and said, can you get my poultice for me, my cabbage poultice? I said, sure. So I went up into the dietary. I went in and opened the refrigerator door, and there was no green poultice. I mean, no green cabbage. But there was a red cabbage. <laughs> so I got the red cabbage, and I beat it, and I made the poultice for him. He put it on. The next morning, he told me he stained his underwear, his pajamas, our carpet, our, 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 uh, our, our, our linen on the bed. He stained everything. Don't use red Cabbages for poultices, it will make a mess. <laughs> but cabbage poultices are great tools for pain, for wounds, bruising. 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 Yeah. Inflammation. Part? Infl yes, inflammation. And not, now, you, who talked about vinegar? Who said vinegar earlier? Vinegar internally can cause a problem. But if you got a bad bruise, I learned this from a lady who used to work in a bar before she became a Christian. And she said in bar, in bar fights, they'll get bruised up and they put vinegar on those black eyes. And, and it takes that black, that bruise away, uh, ecchymosis away very quickly. So I started testing it on bruising. She was right. If you want to get rid of bruise real quick and by, nobody see your bruise, what you do is take your washcloth and keep putting vinegar on it. Or make you take you a four by four or a two by two and put it on the area that's bruised and keep sopping it up with, with vinegar, that, that bruise will go away very quickly. And it's not going to mess with the mucosa inside because it's outside. Um, oh, just white vinegar. Or white vinegar will work or, or apple cider vinegar, either one. Uh, 
I haven't used it on that. Um, MSM is good for that. Uh, horse chestnut is good for that. There's another one. Horse butcher's broom. Thank you. Butcher's broom, horse chestnut are the top two. Those are the top two. For for varicose veins. The MSM is also very good. Uh, MSM cream is very good for uh, uh, varicose veins. Also, a mini trampoline is good for varicose veins. Now, are we supposed to stop or plumb be out of here by 8 o'clock? Okay, good. So, mm, are we going to do a charcoal poultice or are we going to make rocket fuel? Rocket fuel? Y'all know how to make a charcoal poultice, huh? Charcoal poultice, I'll just do, I do 50% charcoal, 50% psyllium powder, mix it thoroughly, put about 5 to 6%, uh, 5 to 6, I'm sorry, one part charcoal, one part psyllium, mix thoroughly. Very important. You've got black, you've got tan. Mix it until it's gray. Because if you don't, the psyllium will congeal, the charcoal will not. And you st you got a mess. Mix it thoroughly. And then you're going to put between five to six parts water based on your psyllium. And psyllium, just depending on the batch you have, some uses more water than others. And you'll just have to figure out what your batch is. But you 5.5 parts and then go either side. And put that, and at first you're going to think he's plumb crazy. There's too much water. But after about a minute, stirring it real good, it turns into a black ball. I'll put a piece of saran wrap. I put the black ball on there. I put the saran wrap on it. I roll it out to a fourth of an inch thick. And you can make it like biscuits or, 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 or uh, cookies where you make a mess of it. A mess means a lot. And then you, so you don't set your eye. And you want to, you've got a small one or breast cancer, and you're just going to put a, you know, and so you can cut out what you need to apply it to the affected area, roll it up, put it back in the refrigerator. It will last five to seven days in the refrigerator. You know how grandma's bread would, would mold if you didn't eat it fast enough because it doesn't have preservatives? Well, the psyllium doesn't have preservatives, so it will mold after a while. And so if you've made more than you're going to use in seven days, cut it and put it in a Ziploc bag, you stick it in the freezer, and it'll last for years. And then you just pull it out and thaw it and use it when you need it. How about flaxseed? Flaxseed will work fine. That's, we use that for many years. And uh, flaxseed is, is more economical. It's more messy. And so I hired a therapist out of Switzerland, and he's the one that taught me to use the, the psyllium. And the psyllium, it's, just, it's like silly putty. It's, it's more manageable. It doesn't make as much mess. But flaxseed works great. It does. Uh, just anything. You can even you can even just take water and pour it in the charcoal and put it on, and it's going to work. But you can, you have to keep hydrating it because once it dries out, it will not draw. Okay, so let's make rocket fuel real quick. Can you do me another one that's warm? Okay, so we're going to do five to ten cloves of garlic. I'm going to do five. You can do ten if you want. The first time I did it was that lady that was from up here that taught me something else. I was, oh, the pine sap I was telling you about. Well, she was from up here in this neck of the woods, and she did it with 10 of these. Um, then we're going to do, um, we're going to do, uh, let's do, equal to a half an onion. So this is a small little one here. You have a good clean knife? Is your knife clean? You got a clean knife? Okay, good. If you can help me. If you can cut this up and put this in here. Okay. Now we're going to put, uh, so we're using a, we're just putting the whole thing because it's a little one. We're going to use, normally it's a half an onion, but we're going to use this little one here, the whole thing. We're going to do a thumb of ginger, a piece of ginger size of your thumb. We're going to do the juice of two lemons. Oh, I cut up a little bit more. This is four? Okay. So we're going to use half of this. I'm going to go to this. Oh, 
I was. So we're doing the juice of two lemons. We're doing two tablespoons of honey. Mary Lou does three tablespoons of honey. Sure, that part, you just put them in there. You'll cook? Good. Squirt three tablespoons in there. <laughs> so I put, um, so, I've, uh, so I've got garlic, I've got onion, I've got um, ginger, I've got honey, and cayenne pepper. And, and lemon. And so cayenne pepper, uh, anywhere from an eighth of a teaspoon to a half a teaspoon. Nora put a half a teaspoon. That stuff was hot with 10 cloves of garlic and a half a teaspoon. Now cayenne pepper is not all equal. Some cayenne pepper might be 20,000 heating units. Some cayenne pepper, if you go to the Pepper Palace over in Pigeon Forge, is 3.1 million. And that's the, uh, that's the uh, Carolina Reaper. The Chinese say they have one now that's over um, over four million, and so you want uh, just a little bit. That's enough of the of the cayenne. I don't know the strength of this. You can put some. Is it okay to put the elderberry in? There? Some elderberry. I did not. I was bringing Alley Med, and they informed me that it was out of stock. It comes in tomorrow. And so I wasn't able to bring it. But any of y'all that wants Alamed, just let me know, and we'll ship it to you. No, no shipping or cost. We'll just ship it to you. And um, here we walk. You want to help me on this? You want to eyeball a tablespoon? She's a cook. Pardon? She's a cook. All right. I need a, I need a tablespoon. <laughs> Whatever you think. I'll go. Thank you. And then you want to add enough warm water to net one quart. You know where a quart is on here? Yeah, that's where I'm at. A quart? No, no. Oh, okay. Out cups. Let's see here. Oh, there we go. 30, let's see here. Okay. 30. Oh, four cups. Okay, got it. So let me put it this way so I can see it. Thank you. I'm learning, <laughs> I'm learning to, uh, to see with this eye. For, for 60 some years, I did not see with this eye. Um, it was just blur. And I changed eye doctors, and he says, Let me see what I can do with that. And, and now it's so I can read out of it somewhat. I don't even read out of this one. This one's from afar. This one, and so I'm still having some trouble, but it's uh, it's better than it was. Not good on the spilling part there. So you net one quart. Grapefruit's excellent to put in there. Yes. Let me see what it tastes like here. That's good. All right. We'll line them up and y'all take it and y'all. So we've run out of time, y'all. That's that's the challenge. There's so much to cover. And we barely touched anything here. Um, tomorrow night, what are we talking about tomorrow night? Oh, that's going to be a lot. That's a hard one, too. I was down in, where was I? Dallas, Texas at six hours. I said, guys, we need to go home. But, I mean, there's just so much to cover. But tomorrow night we're going to talk about 
how do you how do you naturally heal wounds? How do you naturally heal just all kinds of health problems? And uh, just central nat simple natural remedies. So come tomorrow night for that. And then what are we talking about on uh, on Saturday? Yes, thank you. Can I have the mic? Pardon? I put a uh, I put a, a, a tablespoon, and what you do is you drink that whole quart within 30 minutes to an hour. No. <laughs> and anybody sick in the house, everybody drinks it their own part. People will call the store, and we'll make it up for them. And they'll come and get it if they're ailing. Uh, if someone's sick in the house, everybody drinks their quart, and uh, it's very very effective, either preventatively. Preventively, or to treat uh, an ailment. All of those items are antiviral. Thank you. Please do come uh, and get get it. Yes. No, that was elderberry extract. Mm -hmm. um, so tomorrow night we will have at the same time. We're going to be meeting at a different location. It's two uh, two two three five Pine Street. It's the uh, Sandpoint Seventh-day Adventist Church, kind of at the end of Pine Street. Which way? <laughs> this way. And um, so right across from Travers Park. Um, we're going to have more room there, and so we can all be comfortable. And Walt is going to do, uh, like he said, Old Mountain Remedies by Health Condition. That's tomorrow night, Friday, from 6 to 8. He'll also have his products there. If you want to come ahead of time, he will not have them after the meeting, but before the meeting. Uh, on Saturday, we will have him speak at 11 o'clock. There will be a lunch, a potluck lunch. Uh, it's a vegetarian potluck lunch. And uh, then uh, he'll speak again at 2, 3, 4. We'll have a light supper, and then uh, he will speak at six o'clock and on the flyer you have the um the topics uh saturday morning is satan's um ultimate weapon uh two o'clock three o'clock four o'clock he's going to help us to build our own lifestyle plan how will you believe build your own lifestyle plan how do you do a patient assessment and um, so putting that all together and then in the evening, he'll talk about weight loss, intermittent fasting, juicing, and, um, and so that will be the topic that evening. Any questions? Yes. You mentioned diabetes. Will he be able to speak about tomorrow? Tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. And also the, uh, the, even, the Saturday evening one will also help. Very good. Thank you so much.